Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching Yes. It was a long day at the ballpark yesterday for the Yankees, but a very productive one as they took the first two games of this series against the Guardians. Today, they look to map out a three-game sweep. And it's time for baseball, and it's the Hyundai Sunday game of the week. It'll be the New York Yankees against the Cleveland Guardians from Progressive Field in Cleveland, Ohio. Hello again, everybody. John Flaherty again joined by Jeff Nelson. We'll have you for the final game of this three game set. Yesterday, I mentioned it, a long day for the Yankees at the ballpark. But when you win both ends of a doubleheader, Yankees will take that. Tough to sweep a doubleheader yeah. as well, but they did that yesterday. And in game one, how about Oswaldo Cabrero? Hasn't played in five days. Well, in the sixth inning, he hits his third home run, a two run blast. And that was the difference maker right there. And then how about the ninth inning? Clay Holmes, he did the job, locked down. The victory, his sixth save of the season. And then we go to game two, Flash. How about Cody Petit? Gets his start, first outing since July 2022. He was outstanding, giving the Yankees six innings, a one run ball, did not walk a batter, and then Juan Soto. Does this guy do everything? His third of the year, that was in the fourth inning, a three run blast. Well, those are the highlights from yesterday, and here are the numbers on the Yankees starting strong. 12 and 3, best in the major leagues. They won their first five series of the season, and the pitching, Nelly, has been so much better than I think people expected that 2.51 ERA. Well, talk about pitching today. We got a battle of left handers who are going to go at it today. Here's our pitching matchup. It's going to be Logan Allen with his 4.60 ERA against Nestor Cortez with that 3.5, coming off his best outing in a long time, Jeff. Well, eight innings, and that's exactly what I'm sure the Yankees are hoping from him today, especially after the two games in the bullpen usage. This was against Miami. He did outstanding. It looked like he was really strong. I liked how he dropped down to the righties. He had the change up down and away to the righties. He mixed in that cutter. There's that good change up down and away. Only two batters reached base, and that was the same guy, Brian De La Cruz, and nobody went past first base on the Marlins. Yeah, he, here are the numbers. Eight shutout, only a couple of base runners allowed. You just mentioned it. One for eight, a strikeout with his fourth seamer. That was a good weapon for Nestor Cortez. We'll see if he has that this afternoon. When you start 12 and 3, there's going to be a lot of smiles. There's going to be a lot of handshakes, and our Meredith Morakovic is going to be able to talk to the manager about the red hot start for the New York Yankees. Between the Yankees and the Guardians. Hey everyone, I'm Meredith Morakovic. The Yankees continue to roll to start the season. They swept the doubleheader yesterday, ensuring their fifth consecutive series win. Earlier today, Aaron Boone spoke about the hot start. They're having fun playing the game and having fun playing the game together. And uh, I think really trusting and leaning on one another and knowing that it's not all about me to get the job done. It's about me doing my part. And, uh, you know, we've been able to win a lot, win games in a lot of different ways. And that's been really, whether it's, you know, the bullpen picking us up, whether it's a good start, whether it's offense getting the starter out of there, wearing the team down, making a big defensive play. We've done a little bit of everything to help us win games. And you heard Aaron Boone say it. They're finding different ways to win. It seems like they're getting contributions one through nine in the order. Also, they had some solid pitching yesterday in that doubleheader with Clark Schmidt and Cody Petit. Now today, they will turn to Nestor Cortez, who's coming off a great start of his own eight scoreless last time out. Plenty more to come here on the S Network when we get back. John Flaherty will be joined by Jeff Nelson. First pitch coming your way after the break. It's your journey on every mile in a brand new Hyundai. And by FanDuel, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when they place any $5 bet. And by Yale New Haven Health, powering medical breakthroughs. Some big pitchers from both of these teams, the Indians back in the day, the New York Yankees, Satchel Page, Al Downing, just an amazing day in Cleveland, Ohio. Nelly, if I told you on Sunday, April 14th, it was going to turn out to be this nice, 
you would sign up for it. Mid to upper 70s, outstanding weather, outstanding day for baseball. Let's take a look at the starting lineup brought to you by TikTok for the New York Yankees. Anthony Bolte back in that leadoff spot playing shortstop. Juan Soto in right field every day. Aaron Judge in center field batting third. John Carlos Stanton DHing. Anthony Rizzo in first base. Labor Torres playing second. Alex Verdugo playing left field and hitting seventh. Jose Trevino behind the plate. And Oswaldo Cabrera playing third base. A very familiar lineup for the New York Yankees and Aaron Boone sending that one out there pretty much every day and they're going to face a tough left hander in Logan Allen. It'll be his fourth start for the Cleveland Guardians. Let's check out our Nissan pitcher scouting report. Well the righties he does have a great arm but the righties would give him a little issue. The 302 average against those right handed hitters. He does a great job of controlling the running game out of 125 innings. Nobody has stolen a base yet off of Allen. It's the first time that he is facing the New York Yankees. 25 year old is going to be making his fourth start of this season. First career start against the Yankees and his first pitch up high for a ball. Well, Allen has a fastball that will reach 91 to 92. Slider throws a cutter and also a split. Two oh and Volpe ahead in the count. Anthony yesterday in that doubleheader two for eight. Couple of walks couple of stolen bases. Actually got robbed of a couple of extra base hits. Takes a fastball in there for a strike. Nelly, when I go through those numbers, couple of hits, couple of walks, couple of stolen bases, that sounds like a leadoff guy to me. That definitely sounds like a leadoff man. Oh, right back against Allen. Comes up with it. It's going to be a little bit late. We'll see if Logan Allen is all right. Wow, what a way to start the afternoon. Yeah, fastball right down the middle, and he takes it right off a of, look like the maybe around the arm area. Yeah, it looks like that left arm. You watch this, this is a fastball supposed to be away. Right back and off the bicep of that left arm. Tries to recover. You watch this. At the elbow too, Nelly. Yeah. You know, with lefties and a lot of guys, when they follow through, most pitchers now they don't square up to the to the batter. So when they're falling through, following through, they're either going to the third base side like Allen, and they have a really difficult time to try to protect themselves with any comebackers. Well, Allen's going to take a few tosses and see if he's all right. Let's take a look at the Guardians defensively. It looks like Allen says he's going to be all right. It's Juan in left, Freeman in center, Loriano in right. Ramirez back at third base. Arias at short today. Jimenez at second. David Fry playing first base. And the third different catcher for the Guardians, Austin Hedges, behind the plate. Mentioned the numbers yesterday for Volpe in a leadoff spot. He's been hitting the ball hard. Continues that in his first at bat. Bring up Juan Soto, those numbers in his first 15 games. Nelly, you mentioned it. Logan Allen is outstanding, holding the running game in check. Anthony Volpe, we know he likes to be on the move. This would be a nice uh, matchup to pay attention to. Yeah, Allen mixes it up. He does a slide step. Uh, he'll lift his leg a little higher. Turn his head and then go home. Look at the runner that throws over to first. So he mixes it up well, and he's quick in his delivery to home. Yeah, his 125 innings in his career, there has not been a stolen base against him. There's only been five attempts. Tells you how good he is guarding against that running game. As Soto ahead in the count, two and zero. Oh. Yesterday in game two, in his third home run on a 3 0 count to dead center. First time he's playing at Progressive Field, Meredith already told us he, first time he's homered here as he hits this one on a line to right. Loriano up with it, one down. 
Let's take a look at our Kia keys to the game, which is brought to you by your local Kia dealers. And the hammer down, put the hammer down, put a lot of pressure again on the Guardians like you did in game two when you scored eight runs. You know, the leadoff hitter getting on in Volpe and Volpe. And Nestor, it's about him. You go through the relievers yesterday, a couple of them with multiple innings. You're going to need some length out of him. And no, just don't be satisfied with winning the first two. You've won your first five series out of the gate to start the season. You're having an outstanding time on the road so far. Only one loss, and that was in Arizona. This is where you get greedy if you're the Yankees taking the first two of the series. Now you're looking for a three game sweep. Yankees with that major league best record of 12 and 3. Second, the Brewers at 9 and 3. The Royals 10 and 5, and the Pirates 10 and 5. Weeper in there for a strike. So this is the inning that has given Allen the most trouble in his career. Well, his last outing, he gave up five runs against the White Sox, all in the first inning. That's close to an eight ERA in his career, only two years, and a young career in the first inning. Well, you're starting to see some positives with Aaron Judge. In the two games yesterday, three for nine, couple of doubles. 15 walks that's the most in the major leagues. Most in the AL actually and Juan Soto right behind him with 14 walks is Mark Carlson. He's very neutral more outside strikes fewer inside strikes. Yeah he's been doing it a long time. His 26th big league season and he is the crew chief. He's gotten me once. Gotten you as threw you out of a game threw me out of the game once. How many times have you been thrown out of a game? I don't know. It's that many. Six, seven, eight. Some, some anger issues there. <laughs> Something we got to work on. <laughs> I'm protecting you guys. I'm protecting the hitters. That time with him, I, it was, I was arguing balls and strikes. Allen able to get that cutter by Aaron Judge. Two down. You see that cutter up in the zone, and Judge just swings underneath it. John Carlo Stanton DHing, cleaning up today. Went 0 for 4 in the doubleheader with a walk and an RBI. I wonder if Anthony over there at first base might try to get a jump with two outs. Fly ball to center field. Freeman settling underneath it. And that'll do it for the top of the first inning. Logan Allen, after getting a shot back up the middle, looks like he's going to be fine. Stephen Kwan leading off playing left field. Tyler Freeman in center field hitting second. Jose Ramirez in that familiar spot, number three in the lineup. Josh Naylor DHing, cleaning up David Fry at first base. Ramon Laureano in right field. Andres Jimenez moves down to number seven, playing second base. Austin Hedges behind the plate. And Gabriel Arias will play shortstop and hit ninth. Here's Nestor Cortez coming off a best outing he's had in a long time. Three starts, the 3.50 ERA, and let's check out our Nissan pitcher scouting report on Nestor Cortez. Well, hesitation. He had it going against the Marlins. A little drop down. He did hesitate in his windup, throw off the rhythm of the hitters. Building. You can build off of great starts, and you hopefully hope that carries over and in innings. He went eight against the Marlins because of the bullpen in the two games yesterday. Probably looking for him to go a little deeper into the game against the Guardians on Sunday. Well, Nestor, another guy who's had some problems in the first inning this year. See how it goes against the Guardians as Quan, best leadoff men in all of Major League Baseball with that batting average of 381, couple of home runs, five RBIs. Nelly, I thought a good sign for Nestor in his last outing. They had that good four-seam fastball, some really good results with that. He did, and he likes to pitch up in his own with that four-seamer. And you know, he had some good change-ups to the righties of the Marlins down and away. He set that up with that four-seam fastball. The cutter was working well. It's in on his hands, looped into foul territory. Cabrera over will not have a play. 
Let's take a look at the Yankees defensively. Verdugo in left, Judge in center, Soto in right, Cabrera in third, Volpe at short, Labor Torres at second base, Anthony Rizzo at first, Trevino behind the plate, and Nestor Cortez out on the mound. This is becoming old school for the Yankees. You don't even have to look at that lineup if you're a player when you walk in the clubhouse. Day game after a night game after a doubleheader. A lot of the same familiar faces. A looping fly ball into right field, easy out for Soto. Let's take a look at the game time weather presented by Bigelow, the official hot tea of the New York Yankees, and it can't be any better. 75 degrees, and it feels like that. A 15% chance of rain wind left to right field that's been consistent here in Cleveland ball will carry to the right side. Tyler Freeman steps in takes a first pitch heater on the outside corner for a strike. Yeah, when's the last time the Yankees kept throwing the same lineups out over and over again. We're, we're some old veterans up here but I, I love it love the fact that if you're a regular on this team. You know you're going to be in there day in and day out. Now the only change is basically the catcher between Trevino and Wells. Everybody else has been the same. Rizzo constant at first base. Soto out there and right judge. He had a DH time in game one. But was out in center in game two. That four seamer at 92 miles an hour. And Nelly, I don't know how you felt, but whenever I warmed up the starting pitcher, I felt like he could locate that four seamer down and away, like a right hander down and away to a righty. Felt like his mechanics were going to be in great shape. And I think that's why I mentioned I love the four seamer, the last outing from Nestor. Yeah, and this was a, a time where he drops down. And you saw that against Miami as well. A lot of times he'll climb the ladder when he drops down with that four seamer. Now look for maybe him to go down and away with that changeup. Looks like he might come back in. And that caught too much of the plate. You wanted that fastball, that four seamer in. 2 2 count that sets up that changeup down and away. He really had a good one in his last outing. Trying to come in there again. Gets in on his hands. Ground ball to Cabrera. Little low throw, and Anthony Rizzo cannot come up with it. That looked like it hit him in the palm. I don't know if that hit the dirt. You see, Cabrera takes a couple crow hops. That looked like it hit Anthony Rizzo right in the palm, in the air. I don't know if this hit the hit the dirt there, Flash. Uh, if it did just barely I mean it just looked like a play that had to be made. That is an error on Anthony Rizzo. And it brings up the dangerous Jose Ramirez. Spotlight the numbers there 234 batting average. The 0 for 8 in this series and Yankee fans know he has been a Yankee killer through the years. The Guardians not a whole lot of opportunities in those first two games against the Yankees. Be interesting to see if they try to put some pressure on especially when they get some fast runners on the bases. You know, Freeman can run. Two stolen bases that's been thrown out once. A swing and a miss waved by Jose Ramirez. And the first strikeout of the afternoon for Nestor. Well that's an outstanding changeup. Look how it goes down and away from Ramirez. I thought he might do that to Freeman. Outstanding pitch. You come in with some cutters and some four seamers, and you're able to control that change up down and away to righties. Could have a good day. Three errors already this season, 16 games for Anthony Rizzo. Very unlike him. Josh Naylor had his fourth home run last night. Talked about this yesterday. Really, Ramirez and Naylor are the power threats in this lineup. Everybody else, Guardians play a little bit of small ball to try to create some runs.
341 batting average. A K percentage, 9.8. That is second in the American League. Another throw over. Yeah, that was that quick step off and throw from Cortez. Sometimes you can catch the runner sleeping when you do that. You're right. I mean, it's not a really deep lineup. The Guardians, you get through the first first four guys. Quan, the leadoff, is a very good hitter as well. And then you could breathe a little bit if you're out on the mound. If you're Nestor Cortez, you got to pay attention to Naylor. His numbers against left-handed pitching in the last two years have gotten so much better. The batting average at 299 compared to the low 200s years previous. Ahead in the count three and one. Well, Naylor, Naylor looking to pull in this count. Anything on the inner half, he's going to look to drive to right field. Good cutter away or a four seamer away. Big swing, fouls it straight back. That was on the inner half. Naylor's probably kicking himself. He just missed that one. That was supposed to be down and away. You saw where Trevino was setting up. And watch where he's setting up and watch where this pitch is on the in, inner half. You know, when Nelly catchers pay attention to that when a pitcher early in the first inning is missing by that much you know he's not right on time with his mechanics so we'll see what they go with here three and two. Sometimes it's overthrowing a little bit you know you're trying to hit a spot as a pitcher and you overthrow the baseball instead of like you mentioned staying back over the rubber. With a 3 2 count, Rizzo will play behind Freeman. Freeman will be on the move. Swing and a miss. Another strikeout for Nestor, able to work a clean first inning. We'll take this one to the second. Hey, fans, you can stream every out of market game live or on demand. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Second inning will be Rizzo Torres and Verdugo. Against a lefty Logan Allen. Rizzo first pitch swinging pops it up to the right side. Jimenez going back Loriano coming in and it'll be Loriano for the first out here in the second. The winds out there are swirling watching the flag they blow to right field and just then during Rizzo's bat. Blew out to the center towards left. Now I'm glad you're bringing this up. Yes. From our vantage point here, looking at the flags, where do you, would you think that the ball would be carrying? Uh, out to right field, right center field. Right field, right center. Now, when Meredith Morakovitz did her pregame report from the field, she said the wind is blowing in from right field. Well, I think the grounds crew had a fan on her, and it was blowing on her. To her left. Well, I'm going to give her some more credit because you just mentioned the winds may be swirling. swirling. So maybe out on the field, it's going to play different than what visually it looks like to us here in the booth. Well, if you get it up in the air, where's it blowing? Well, I got to believe it's going to go out to right center. I would think so. Glaber Torres, two for eight in that double header yesterday. Batting average at 200. Glaber was locked in all spring, looking to get it going here. Mid April gets jammed, easy ground ball, Arias across the diamond, and two quick outs. You know, without DJ LeMayhew in the lineup and probably the leadoff hitter for the Yankees, Torres was that leadoff guy for a while and struggled. And, you know, sometimes guys just don't handle that leadoff, leadoff spot. Well, I mean, you're the first guy, obviously, up for that team. You try to work the count and let everybody else know in that lineup, hey, this is what the pitcher has that day. A little tougher position, probably, for Torres. They drop him back down, get him more comfortable, get him going again. Yeah, I just think this lineup looks right to me, Nelly. You know, with Mulpey at the top and Glaber more in the middle. Now you got Verdugo hitting seventh, and he's starting to heat up three for six yesterday with three walks. I've 
stretch you know, on the outside caught a lot of a lot of the plate from Allen. Logan Allen has been a good pitcher during day games. He's had nine career daytime starts in ERA of 2.19. Drills that fastball down and away. Might have been a makeup call. That one that he missed caught a lot of the plate, and that was off the plate. That could have been ball four. And the 3 2 to Verdugo. That misses off the plate. Another walk for Alex Verdugo. That'll bring up the eighth hitter, Jose Trevino. Guardians now nine and five. Plus the last two games against the Yankees. They will travel to Boston tonight and play that Patriot Day game at Fenway Park tomorrow morning at 11-10. So a quick turnaround for them against the Red Sox. Did you ever play in that game? I did. Did you? The Boston Marathon Day and the Patriot game. And How was that playing at 11 o'clock? You, you have a couple of cups of coffee and let's go. Let's go get them. You know, you have a nice l lunch. Boylston Street, you're good to go, Melly. Ground ball, easy play for Jimenez and Logan Allen for two shutout innings here in Cleveland. It is time for the Audi Electric Moment. Experience a fully electric Audi vehicle at your local tri state Audi dealer today. On this date, Elston Howard made his debut with the New York Yankees in 1955. He would later on become the American League MVP, 12-time All-Star, two-time Gold Glover, four-time World Series champ. And from everybody that ever knew Elston Howard, they said what a tremendous gentleman he was. Yeah, that's what I heard as well. You know, it's one of the things about being around old-timers, you hear a lot of the stories of, of the players in the past. And, you know, you heard a lot of great things about Elston Howard. That is an impressive resume there. 14 big league seasons, Yankees and the Red Sox, four-time world champion, the AL MVP in 63, a 12-time All-Star. David Fry will lead off here in the second. There's another thing that happened on this date, Nelly, that kind of jumped out to me. 2021, Carlos Rodon of the White Sox. Pitch a no hitter. An 8 0 home win early over in the Cleveland. season. Yeah, it was a perfect game until he hit Roberto Perez with one out in the ninth. Got the last two outs and was able to finish up the no hitter. And Larry Doby, first African American to play in the American League. Here's his resume 13 big league seasons, the world champ in 48, seven time All Star, two time. American League home run leader in 52 and 54 and a Hall of Fame inductee. When you have a resume like that, you get a statue outside of Progressive Field. Three consecutive strikeouts for Nestor Cortez. Fly ball left field, Verdugo underneath it, two down. Yeah, it looks like he's starting to settle in a little bit. The, the Fastball commands getting a little bit better. Always that first inning is adjustment for starters to navigate through that. Then all of a sudden they get used to the game mound. Game situation start to settle in a little bit. And just a reminder tomorrow is Jackie Robinson day around baseball. Guardians will take it to Boston for the Patriot Day game. The Yankees will take it to Toronto in a three game series against the Blue Jays and get a new look at the renovated Rogers Center. Yeah it looks good. They took a lot from different parks. Some of it was from Yankee Stadium as far as their legend seating behind the behind the home plate there in Toronto. A little hesitation from Nestor. 
What was that little show of the baseball? <laughs> he fake threw the ball. <laughs> he watched this. I thought he was going to step off and lose his balance. Yeah, he steps. He didn't touch the ground yet. Oh, there he goes. I don't know if I've ever seen I've that. I've never seen it. And he finishes him up with a soft roller to Rizzo. Can't come up with it. Got to believe that's going to be the second error for Anthony Rizzo. Two innings of this game. The only thing that I'm thinking it may go down it may go down in the air but I don't think you watch Cortez falls off to the third base side. I don't know if he gets over there in time to even get him in his. They may change this even though Rizzo should have fielded this fielded this cleanly and maybe get in front of the ball instead of feel it to the side. I really don't know if Cortez would have had him and it would have been an easier play for Glaber Torres who was standing right behind Anthony Rizzo. So maybe one of those plays where the first baseman ranges too far. Another look at the ground ball. Nestor's a little late. So the inning is extended for Austin Hedges. And they may look at it, look at that again and change that to a base hit. Right now, it's going down as an error in E3. Jimenez a threat to run has two stolen bases has been thrown out once. You know 34 pitches from Cortez you have a couple errors it's adding uh, another five to eight pitches. For Nestor. Three games for the Guardians, three different catchers behind the plate. It was Naylor in game one, Fry in game two, and now the veteran Austin Hedges here in the final game of the series. Up and in, check swing, did not go. And you're right, the flash Torres is right behind, and sometimes, and he, and Anthony Rizzo is so good at this as far as knowing where. Torres is at second and not go so far to his right. Swing and a miss. That is the fourth strikeout for Nestor Cortez, who's off to a strong start. It is time for Pinstripe Pride, brought to you by Toyota, the official hybrid vehicles of the New York Yankees. Today's submission comes to us from David, a Yankee fan all the way from France, who recently made the pilgrimage to Yankee Stadium. Use the hashtag Toyota Pinstripe Pride and mention yes in pictures you post to social media to reflect your love for the Bronx Bombers. We might spotlight you in a future game. Everybody having <laughs> Matt <some> play <laughs> a little fake throw. I didn't even know if that was legal. You act like you throw throwing the ball and the next thing you know you don't and then you really throw the ball. I guess what it tells us Nelly is that that shoulder issue from last year is probably long gone because I could not imagine anybody doing that with any discomfort in their throwing arm right I mean dropping down having a little fun out there it's all good signs for Nestor. Yeah absolutely and he's loving it too and for him to have that kind of balance over the rubber that's pretty incredible. Back to the top of the lineup. And why not? If, if you have success with it, keep it going. I mean, as a hitter, how do you stay concentrated when you have a, a pitcher out there doing all kinds of different things? Well, the most frustrating thing from a hitting standpoint is when a pitcher can change timing, right? When they'll quick pitch you, when they'll really hold set, because hitting is all about getting your hands moving at the right time and. When we watch a guy like Volpe where his hands are right now. He's got a little rhythm. He can get into his legs and that's when you really get off your a swing. Nestor messes with that. And I love this little move that Volpe does right there where he puts his hands back a little bit almost a reminder that I want my hands to be back a little bit more. Chokes up the, on the bat just a little bit.
And that's ball four, so Volpe will be on base again. And an infield hit with his line drive off of Allen in the first. Now a one out walk in the third. Well, after being on base in that first inning and getting some timing from Logan Allen, the pitcher, maybe you get a bigger lead, maybe you try to get him to throw over just to see his move. And Allen's doing a nice job. He's watching Volpe, and, and Volpe dances around at first. As soon as Volpe goes back, he starts going, making that move back to first base. He'll release the ball to home. You watch him. He'll get he'll get that jump and hop around. As soon as he goes back there, that's when he releases the ball. You know, Nelly, it reminds me when we were game planning against the the great Ricky Henderson. We always said we want him to be flat footed, right? right? He wanted to get a little bit of rhythm and get some timing on his jump and see the same thing with Volpe with the way he's active over there. If you can get him flat footed, he's not going anywhere. No, and, and now it's a little different with Ricky. You could at least hold the ball, and you want to make the hitter back then before the pitch clock. You wanted to make the hitter call timeout. I mean, you just said you always give like the fist, or yep. if you're a catcher, and that means hold and wait for the hitter to call timeout. Now you can't because of the pitch clock. Cutter misses down and away. Mentioned it. Not a career stolen base allowed in 141 innings against Logan Allen. There's always a first and hedges he throws well behind the plate so this is a tough combination to run on. Here's the beauty of Juan Soto though right quickly behind the count 0 and 2 takes a couple of tough pitches right back in it now at 2 and 2. And Aaron Judge waiting on deck. Throw over. Line drive to right field. Volpe had to freeze for a second, but he's going to be on his way to third as Juan Soto will hold with a base hit. First and third, one down for Aaron Judge. Freeze. That almost drilled yep. Anthony Volpe. That was a shot down the first baseline. Watch. He gets a fastball upstairs and drills it. And Anthony Volpe just barely got out of the way. Watch him. He had to get out of the way of that before he was able to run. This is a line shot. Such a great swing. It's a great look from the side on how long his bat stays through the strike zone as Aaron Judge absolutely demolishes one to left field. Wow. A monster home run for Aaron Judge, his third of the year, and a three-run shot. 260th career home run for Aaron Judge. Well, that's the way the Yankees <laughs> draw it up, right? You get the first two guys on. Juan Soto works the count. Gets on base for Aaron Judge. That was about three-quarters up. Oh, the bleachers there in left center field. Judge was three for nine in the doubleheader with a couple of doubles. So some good signs from the Yankee captain. When you're on, a, on the mound as a pitcher and you have a team that works the count, whether you're a starter or a reliever, and you get ahead of guys and, and you have a team, it, you look at Soto, you're never comfortable. That feeling of, okay, when you get ahead 0-2, you're like, okay, I got it. I mean, it's, I'm just going to make him, you know, swing at some bad pitch. And when you have a team that is comfortable hitting with two strikes, Stanton caught looking. It, it's tough. It's tough to pitch to. I mean, you have you have a Juan Soto. Watch this home run. This is a, a slider that just stays out over the middle of the plate, and this is just demolished. 
stays back. What a great swing. And watch where this thing goes. Stephen Kwan out in left field gave it a little courtesy jog. <laughs> Juan Soto looked like he stopped about halfway to second just to enjoy it. But Nelly, to your point, the Yankees have seen 4.18 pitches per at bat this year. That leads Major League Baseball to your point about grinding at bats and wearing pitchers down. It is, and it frustrates you because you get ahead and you make some really good pitches thinking, okay, I'm going to get some swings and misses out of these pitches, and they're either fouled off or they're taken. And when you have a team that's very comfortable hitting with two strikes, it's up and down that lineup. It's it's tough for an opposing pitcher. Well, think about this Yankees start. Twelve and three record. Labor Torres really hasn't gotten going yet. Aaron Judge is off to a slow start. He's starting to heat up. They've been doing this with great pitching. Contributions from everybody up and down the lineup, but when Aaron Judge, usually it's Aaron Judge goes, we go, but it hasn't been that way early this year. As this has popped up, hedges over by the Yankee dugout will make the play and falls into the dugout on the first couple of steps. Nice play by the Guardians catcher. But the third inning was all about the Yankee captain, Aaron Judge, his third home run of the year, three run shot, home run number 260 for Judge. It's time for today's injury report brought to you by Montefiore Einstein, the official hospital of the New York Yankees. DJ LeMahieu, who has been out with a non-displaced back fracture in his right foot, is starting to make some significant progress, guys. He was out on the field earlier today doing some defensive drills, also running the bases a little bit. He's also been hitting on the field. I spoke with him in the clubhouse today. He'll travel with the team to Toronto, and they think shortly thereafter he could be going out on a rehab assignment. I asked him how many games he thinks he needs, how many at bats he wants to get and he said I'm trying to be smart about it but I'm ready I've had enough I'm tired of watching I want to get back out there with my teammates so it looks like he could be back within the next couple weeks uh, really good news Meredith yeah we watched him over the last couple days get Loop, some work in looping line drive to left center field that's going to be a leadoff hit here in the third for Arias a number nine hitter talked about this a little bit yesterday Nelly I would think that that rehab assignment would be all about what DJ LeMay reports after games yeah my timing's good he'll dictate when he's coming back up here right they go home the Yankees have off well, I think on Thursday before they start the weekend series against Tampa Bay and then Oakland comes in I imagine possibly on that road trip if he can get a rehab stint started next weekend starting next weekend you might see him soon. Back to the top of the lineup for the Guardians. Quano for one with a fly out in the first. You know, we talk so much about the shutdown innings, and after the Yankees put a, a big three spot at the top of the third, this is where you want a zero. In that bottom half. Sky the other way, Verdugo settling underneath it right in front of the warning track. Through 102 pitches of those eight shutout innings against Miami, his last outing. Big outing for him, but also a big outing to reset the bullpen. Had been worked a lot before that start. He gave them a little bit of a break. And stress free, too. I don't know if he got into a three ball count in those eight innings. Only allowed two base runners, and they were from the same guy. Brian De La Cruz got two base hits against Cortez. Not a player went past first base. That was it. He was outstanding. We 
you love about this outing early on Nestor filling up the strike zone pitching ahead and counts struck out four already. Again ahead and count one and two. A couple pitches up in the zone and they're both cutters. He does a nice job of changing the eye level on the hitter with the cutter up the four seamer up he'll drop the chains down and away. You get the hitter guessing at something up in the zone that was a four seamer up in the zone. Great time for something down and away he's got a good feel of that change up. Let's see what he does here. And the one two slapped the other way spoiling some tough pitches. Jam shot Rizzo shielding the sun from his eyes with his glove. Two down. And a little sarcastic clap from the clock from the crowd there with <laughs> Anthony Rizzo. He's had a couple of errors in this one. You probably have to go back a long way to see when the last time Anthony Rizzo has made two errors in a game. Two down bring up Jose Ramirez struck out in the first. Ramirez a switch hitter who has more power against right handed pitching but the batting averages from both sides pretty much the same 279 against righties 278 against lefties. Shot pulled foul. Ramirez 0 for 9 in this series, and you just get the feeling the Yankees want to make their way to Toronto and say you can get you can get hot against the Red Sox right, exactly. at Fenway Park. That's in there for a strike at 92 miles an hour. It yeah, looked like Ramirez looking off speed, something in to maybe that cutter, and he takes a, a heater right down the middle. Is it a changeup he waved at when he struck out in the first inning? He's way off balance. We'll see what Nestor comes with here, one and two. Yeah, that was a good pitch and good, good thinking by Trevino, knowing that, hey, maybe Ramirez is sitting off speed. Talk about the location for Nestor. We talked about his four seamers last out. That was 94 miles an hour. So he's got something on the fastball as Ramirez hits it down the left field line and gone. A two run shot. It's only a matter of time before he gets going, and the Guardians are right back in it. Well, the whole at bat, it just seemed. Uh, the way he was taking fastballs, he just fouled off that 94 mile an hour fastball. He was just sitting off speed. And that's exactly what he got right there. He got a change up that was supposed to be down and away, and it catches too much of the plate and up. And he hits it down the line. Guardians right back in the game. Naylor first pitch swinging that's a line drive down the right field line and that's going to be extra bases. Two out double for Naylor. Well the first pitch cutter you see where Trevino setting up and it just caught too much of the plate it didn't get down and away. 
Right now, the Guardians are just coming up. They're sitting on Cortez. They're sitting on off speed. Ramirez's whole at bat sitting something soft and got it. Same with Naylor there. That'll bring up the first baseman, David Fry. Nelly, you talked about shutdown innings. Cortez not able to do that here in the bottom of the third. Fry struck out his first at bat. In on the hands, fouls off the cutter. And you look at Ramirez who's at bat, and Nestor walking around the mound thinking that he was going to get that pitch. It's a fastball just off. And you watch where this four seamer is. It's just off the plate. And both Trevino thought it was a good pitch as well. Naylor with a big lead. He's going to third to throw over, and he's gone. But the Guardians answer back a two run shot from Jose Ramirez, and they are right back in it. Check out and follow Yes Network on TikTok for more content. 3 2 Yankees, top of the fourth on our Cadillac scoreboard. Glaber Torres deep to left and foul. Looking for his first home run of the year. Just a little too quick. Torres grounded out in the second inning. Was the first pitch changeup, and that's something something has changed over the years, hasn't it? A lot more first pitch changeups. Good swing, fouled straight back. You get a lot of first pitch changeups from relievers that come in and hasn't even faced a hitter before. Well, don't you think the game has changed in the fact that it's what's your best pitch and throw it as much as you can? Yeah, definitely. But at the same time, it, you know, you look at it, if you miss, just like Glaber kept that fair. That'll find the seats. You miss with the changeup. It's a BP, BP fastball. fastball. Yep. I mean, you're out on the hill, and if you're a reliever coming in, and, and that hitter hasn't seen your fastball, I don't care what kind of report you have on him, and all of a sudden you're you're throwing a first pitch changeup. Ground ball, Ramirez up with it. Let's check out FanDuel's live same game parlay. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when they place any $5 bet. Well, just listening to you talk, Nelly, about that, I think of our buddy David Cohn, who would always say you got to protect, protect your changeup, right? You got to throw your fastball enough. To protect your best pitch, if that if that is it, your changeup. Yeah, and everything everything comes off the fastball. Yeah. Alex Verdugo walked his first at bat against Logan Allen. And you look at Verdugo's season; the first 10 games, batting average of 143, had one extra base hit. Well, his last five, it's turned around: a 438 batting average, four extra base hits. Get the bottom of the lineup hot. Verdugo, you just mentioned his numbers. You have Cabrera hitting ninth today, and how hot he's been. You mentioned balance in this lineup. Volpe, a righty leading off, then the lefty Soto, then two righties, and Judge and Stanton, then the lefty. As Verdugo gets caught looking at the cutter, it doesn't seem like he's real happy with Mark Carlson in that call. Yeah, Carlson's been a little consistent behind the plate. You know, that ball was off the outside edge. And Cortez couldn't get that pitch in the previous inning on a right hander. And you see where Hedges is setting up. I mean, he's even setting up off the plate. 
There's that first pitch changeup and a big swing and a miss from Trevino. I see about what three or four inches outside. Popped up. Out of play. Reminds me of an umpire we worked a lot with, Derwood Merrill. I'd say that's a Hall, Hall of Fame pitch. Yes. Now do you see why I got thrown out of the game? <laughs> I'm proud of myself. I only got thrown out of one major league game. One. 13 and a half years. One. Drive to left center field and hit well. And that's gone. A solo shot for Jose Trevino. His first of the year. Now four to two Yankees. Now the bottom of the lineup heating up. You love to see that. You get one of those two runs back that you gave up in the bottom of the, of the third inning. Ball flies here when it's warm. There's a one two fastball was supposed to be in out over the middle of the plate. Fly ball left field. Juan settling underneath it so that will do it for the top of the fourth. But Jose Trevino with his first long one of the year gives the Yankees another run. They now lead four to two. Four to two Yankees on our Cadillac scoreboard. Jose Trevino with his first home run of the year. Nestor Cortez back after it here in the bottom of the fourth inning. It'll be Fry, Loriano, and Jimenez for the Guardians. Well, you wonder that second time around the lineup that he's facing the Guardians. First four hitters seem to sit on off speed. Try one of the four strikeouts for Cortez. Three two fouled off. Just got word that that Aaron Judge home run went 450 feet. But three quarters of the way At up least. the bleachers. About five or six rows from the top. That fastball misses out over the plate. And we were reminded that Mark McGuire homered off the scoreboard here. In 1997, low on its left side, that was 533 feet. This one, 450. And watch where it lands. Way up there. McGuire hit his home run off of Oral Hershiser. He was still with the A's then, but got traded to the St. Louis Cardinals later that season. And that scoreboard is a long way. What did they measure that? 533 feet. <laughs> up Ramon Laureano. Fluker lined out in the second inning. That's something that they when well, usually you don't see home runs over 500. I mean, you, we probably figured that you know, that's well over 500, but baseball won't say it. And he said 533. 
Ellie, I want to take this opportunity to wish the Yankee bench coach, our very good buddy, Brad Osmus, his birthday today, 55 years old for, 55. for Brad. Yeah. Happy birthday, Brad Osmus. Celebrate with a Yankee win today. Was Brad looking good for 55. One of the best receivers in all of baseball, Brad Osmus. Keeps in great shape. He was a great catcher back in the day. He had a great career. He really did. And, he was you know, traded for somebody, wasn't he? Who was he well, traded yeah, we with? We were traded for each other. Yes. But, you know, he's, he's had a great run as a player, as a manager, as a coach, as Nestor gets Loriano to swing through that, his fifth strikeout. There was the trade June 18th, 1996. Well, how about you? Two on two. There we go. Three players for two in flash. Myself, Chris Gomez. That was a catcher and a shortstop for a catcher and a shortstop and Russ Spear. Brad went on to really excel with the Houston Astros. So happy birthday, Brad Oscars. Brad looks a whole lot better than yeah, I did. I was going to say. I'm like, wow. I'll give it to him. You need to get on the diet or do whatever that uh, Brad's doing. I might need to as well. Wow. Now, <laughs> I, I am a year older than Brad. And we do have different body types, Nelly. But I don't think he's throwing the, you know, the steel around like I am in the weight room. You guys were uh, heard in the weight room together the other day. He was very focused on his workout. Yes, that's what I heard. Yeah. You can see. There's the 0 2 from Cortez. See if they can turn to a soft ground ball. Bolt B over to Rizzo. Not going to be in time. Jimenez runs too well. That previous strikeout was Nestor's fifth, and that fifth Yankee strikeout is brought to you by Audi in the 2024 Audi Q5. Visit your local tri state. Audi dealer today. Two down, bring up catcher Austin Hedges. He was one of those five strikeouts. Hedges, a reputation as an outstanding defensive catcher, also one of those great clubhouse guys. He's gained a lot of credit for changing the culture around here inside the clubhouse for rookie manager Stephen Vogt. Yeah, they have three catchers. Odd that they, the club carries three catchers. Fry caught game two, now he's over at first base, so. He can play multiple positions. You have Naylor also caught in game one. So rookie manager Stephen Vogt was a catcher, so he knows how important it is for those guys working with a pitching staff. I think one of the toughest jobs for a rookie manager is working that bullpen, and Vogt has an outstanding bullpen the first couple of weeks for the Guardians. So. A lot of names to choose from in that Cleveland pen. Yeah, I gave the catchers and the managers a compliment yesterday. You know, every once in a while, and when you guys played, you threw down the wrong fingers, but you know, make so, pretty good managers. So you gave the compliment yesterday, and you're not going to do it again today, is what you're well, telling me. I'm just saying when you play. As managers, I think the catchers make outstanding managers. Because you guys always had to know everything. You know, but you're getting the signs from either the manager, bench coach, everything's in front of you. You have to know the hitters, know the pitchers. Know the situations. 21 pitches this inning for Nestor Cortez. Trying to work his way through four. And he's going to be able to do it. Another strikeout. It's going to be his sixth on the afternoon. The Yankees lead this one four to two. We'll take it to the fifth. Our congratulations to Anthony Volpe on being voted the Montefiore Einstein Player of the Week. And you win that award when you do that over your last six games. Batting average of 318, a home run, four RBI, six runs, four stolen bases. And Anthony is leading off the top of the fifth inning. 
Well, here's a question for you. With DJ LeMayhew comes back, and well, that's probably what another 10 days or so. Not sure when, but Anthony Volpe stay in that leadoff role. Boy, he he lo he looks perfect to I me agree. in that spot. I we, agree. We've been running through the numbers on not just how he's swinging the bat, stealing bases, but getting on base. And Anthony has mentioned he feels very very comfortable leading off a lineup. Well, it helps getting off to a great start. Got jammed a little bit. Easy play for Freeman in center field. Bring up Juan Soto for his third at bat. And, you know, Nelly, we, we could talk about this hot start for the Yankees, 12 and 3, but. One of the numbers that I really look at the Yankees are 6 and 0 in one run games. That's the best in Major League Baseball as Soto lays down a bunt. Perfectly executed. As Ramirez was playing back giving him that infield bunt. Smart play. Oh absolutely especially now that you know judge just hit some. Slider 450 here. You see where Ramirez is playing. No shot of getting Soto. He's just going to eat it, not even make an attempt over to first base. You get Judge hot, and Soto can do this work the count, work the walks. Square around. He knows where Ramirez is playing. Gets a pitch up in his own. He's able to get a good bunt down the third baseline. It's a cutter in there for a strike. Aaron Judge with that home run, number 260 for his career. That ties another Yankee captain, Derek Jeter, on the Yankees' home run leaderboard. As this is hit well to right center field. Loriano and able to make a nice play. Rob Avern Judge of extra bases. Well, the last couple of days, uh, Aaron Judge has really been swinging the bat well, and that was drilled to right center field. Nice catch by Loriano right on the warning track. He squared that cutter up and drilled it to the right side. Two down and bring up John Carlos Stanton hit a fly ball his first at bat struck out looking his last at bat. So to 35 times on base through the team's first 16 games. And he's running a delay steal. Hedges from his knees, the tag, and they got him. Nice play by Jimenez. Juan Soto going with the delay steal. Hedges the throw, Jimenez the pick, and Juan Soto gets thrown out trying to steal a base. Here in the fifth inning. Wow, what a pick. Going with the delay, Steele got thrown out to end the top of the fifth. We now move it to the bottom half, and it'll be 9 1 2 for the Guardians. Arias, Quan, and Freeman. As Nestor Cortez, his pitch count up at 81. Here comes pitch number 82. He threw 21 in the first, 16 in the second, 21 in the third, 22 in the fourth. And Nelly, I always thought starting pitchers about 15 in inning is what you were looking for. So a little elevated with the pitch count this afternoon. Yeah, and you're starting to see the ball get elevated as well. Those three pitches there up in the zone. He had that extra day, you know, with the day off. Was a good heater there. 91 on the outside corner. He stayed back. It was nice. 
Well, usually you'd be worried about the bullpen after a day night double header but with the way yesterday played out for the Yankees should be in pretty good shape with their bullpen and the arms that are available to Aaron Boone. Gonzalez did not work birdie did not work Weaver did not work. Eighty five that's a perfect example of that pitch right there how you may be getting a little gassed out there that wasn't even close you fly open next thing you know the ball is way outside. Three two sky to right center field and hit well. And deep and gone. Got it up in that jet stream out to right center field. Nestor Cortez challenged him. And a solo shot for Arias, the number nine hitter for the Guardians, the first of the year for him. Well, every pitch that Cortez threw to Arias were, was up in the zone. He had one on the outside corner, but everything else up. You see, it's a 3 2 fastball. Look where this pitch is. Just a little above his belt. This landed up in the Yankee bullpen. And he got it up in that jet stream out to right center field. And there is some action in the Yankee bullpen. This might be a nice idea for Matt Blake to go out, maybe talk to him, or even Trevino to go out and settle him down just a little bit. This will be the third time through the lineup for the Guardians. Quan. 0 for 2, couple of fly balls. That's a looping line drive. That's going to be a base hit in the right field. Well, look at this pitch. It's 3 2 on Arias. And this lands right up in the Yankee bullpen. Go settle him down. And Matt Blake goes out, get the bullpen, a few more throws down there, but also, you know, tell him to stay back a little bit, give him a little breather. With the pitch clock, that's hard to do. The only way you're going to be able to get a breather is if the catcher goes out or the pitching coach. Nelly, I mentioned a little bit earlier too that the Yankees are six and zero in run, run one run game, so they're in another tight one this afternoon. And let's take a look back at that Juan Soto. Trying to steal a bag doing the delay steal. You're taught to shuffle three times to try to catch a catcher and a middle infielder napping, and he actually executed the surprise part. There's the shuffle. Hedges threw from his knees, so you know he wasn't prepared for it. And the only way they get him is a great pick by Jimenez. So not a bad idea or execution from Juan Soto. Tyler Freeman 0 for 2. Quan at first base. He does have some speed. Yeah, I imagine this might be his last hitter, Nestor Cortez. You have Ramirez on deck. He may not want to face Ramirez with runners in scoring position or on base. has left Nestor here in this inning and fastballs up hasn't been able to throw that slider for a strike a little flatter in this inning. And we mentioned earlier in the game he was ahead in the count 0 2 1 2 now all of a sudden falling behind. Five hits, three runs. He's walked one and struck out six. Well, this might be a situation here. You're 2 2. A lot of times it's a, an off speed count. Laquan go. He's not running. It looked like it caught a piece of Freeman. It'll be a hit by pitch. 
Guardians have something going here in the fifth. Aaron Boone's going to see if they should take a look at this one. He attempts to swing. Does it get the knob of the bat? It does. Looked to me like it got the knob of the bat. Are they even going to challenge this? Aaron Boone's going to make the call to the bullpen for a new pitcher. Nestor Cortez not able to make his way through the fifth inning. Yankees lead four to three. Three six five. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet Three Six Five. And by Buick, visit your local Tri-State Buick dealers. And by the New York Lottery, get out there and play. Birthplace of rock and roll, Cleveland, Ohio. A new pitcher for the Yankees, Nick Birdie. It'll be his sixth outing. Three and two thirds, three walks, and four strikeouts. Big time fastball, 97 to 100, and a slider. Mr. Cortez looking on. Eight shutout, his last outing against the Marlins. A little tougher go of it this afternoon against the Guardians. Quan off of second. Freeman taking his lead off of first, and the dangerous Jose Ramirez now moves over to the left side against the righty birdie. That slider misses badly down and in. We'll take a look back to the Freeman at bat. It looks like it hit the knob of the bat, but the Yankees not challenging that call. Yeah, I'm a little surprised. That was a big situation right there, just to even just take a chance. Well, here's that changeup, and he was sitting off speed the whole at bat. He gets it, and he crushes it for a two-run homer. First and second, nobody out. Popped up, Cabrera going back. It's going to be Volpe calling for it, sliding and making the catch. Big out for Nick Birdie. Yeah, nice job by Birdie hustling over there to third as well. You had Cabrera and also Volpe all converting on that fly ball. Third baseman was third base was wide open. That was a good pitch, a slider down and in. Actually, that was a fastball up and in. Up the designated hitter Josh Naylor at a double in the third. you the other way something down and away whether it's a fastball a backdoor slider fastball at 98 down and in we've seen this from Naylor he, he's a power hitter but he also has some plate discipline get himself in some good fastball counts Four home runs already, 10 RBIs for Naylor. That's hit well, base hit. Quan around third, he's going to score. Freeman on his way to third. And Josh Naylor comes through again. A base hit, an RBI, and we are all tied up at four. Well, I like the idea with the slider. It just caught too much of the plate. There you see where it is. It's you throw that back door slider maybe more away. You might get a double play out of it. That caught too much of the play. Nice job by Naylor and really nice job by Soto cutting that ball off and getting it into the infield. That 
is the first hit that Nick Birdie has given up in five relief appearances. This will be his sixth. First and third, one down for David Fry. Backhand pick by Trevino on a 99 mile an hour fastball. Play Fry to pull. You have Naylor. It doesn't run well at first. I would doubt that he even attempts a stolen base. A little surprised maybe that Rizzo's holding him on like he is. Maybe get off just a little bit. Get off a little bit. It looks like the Yankees pinched up the middle looking for that double play. Yankee outfield pretty much straight up against David Fry. Anthony Rizzo holding on Naylor. Naylor is not a really stolen, a good stolen base threat. And, you know, big hole on the right side between first. We get a little bit more. Fastball gets him right on the outside corner. Perfect pitch for Birdie. Outstanding there, right on the outside edge at 99 miles an hour. No chance. Jose Trevino out in front of home plate going through the first and third defenses on pitched calm. In case Naylor tries to steal a bag. I think he's know what defense they want to go with. Two down, it's going to bring up Loriano. Oh for two with a strikeout. The 2-0 that misses badly again down and away. Yeah, a couple crossfire fastballs. You know, not keeping that front shoulder closed. Trying to go away, just missing too far away. Jimenez waiting on deck. See if Loriano has the green light 3-0, taking all the way. Two, that's going to free up Naylor at first. He'll be on the move. Nelly, you just have to imagine this would be my best fastball in the outer half against Loriano. Let's see what you can do with it. Yeah, that last one at 100 miles an hour. Four runs on six hits now for the Guardians. And the 3 2 fastball up and they got him. But the Guardians chip away. They put two on the board. We're all tied up at four. Thank you, Bob. We'll take a look around the majors. The Brewers, seven plus runs in six straight games. That ties a franchise record. And Managa off to a great start. With the Chicago Cubs, not an earned run in 15 and a third. And Rodriguez, his major league debut yesterday with the Blue Jays, signed from Cuba on February 9th. All tied up at four on our Montefiore Einstein scoreboard. Don Carlos Stanton will lead off the top of the sixth inning for the Yankees against Logan Allen. 
still out there here in the sixth inning after taking a line drive off of his left arm. First batter of the game, Anthony Bolpe. Brewers off to a good start. Ten and three, leading the Central. I think he's will go there in a couple weeks. Some action in the Yankee pen. Gonzalez getting hot. Off the end of the bat. Loriano went back. Now coming in. Able to not make the play. The throw to second. And they're going to get Giancarlo Stanton at second. Loriano out there in right field. He took a couple steps back. Really fooled the right fielder. You see how he freezes there. He has to hustle in. You watch his wrist. Wow. He gets caught up. He tries to make the throw. Watch his wrist get bent back. And once it gets bent back, he loses the ball. One down to bring up Anthony Rizzo. Watch his wrist, a heck of an effort. Comes right out. Fly balls and pop ups the last two days have been an adventure here in Cleveland. The sun, the wind, the high sky. Loriano's fourth outfield assist as Rizzo goes down swinging. Tomorrow on Yes, the Yankees road trip continues as the Bombers head to Toronto for a matchup with the Blue Jays. Coverage begins at 6 o'clock with the Audi batting practice today and then the pregame with first pitch scheduled for shortly after 7 o'clock. Remember, if you get Yes on TV, then you definitely get the Yes app for free or you can sign up for a subscription. Logan Allen hung in there, a gutty performance, able to get the Guardians into the sixth. Hey fans, last season's Aaron Judd's number 62 bobblehead giveaway that was rained out has been rescheduled for Saturday, April 20th. So come see the Yankees take on the Rays and the first 18,000 guests in attendance will receive an Aaron Judge number 62 bobblehead, the second of a two-part collectible set courtesy of TikTok. Tickets are going fast, so get yours today at Yankees.com. The pitcher for the Guardians, Cade Smith. His eighth game of the year, off to a great start. Four walks, 13 strikeouts, and eight and two-thirds. Smith threw in game two yesterday, an inning of work, one hit, one walk, a strikeout. Big time fastball, slider split, 95 96. Rookie. Big kid, about 6 5 now. Right handed hitters are 1 for 12 against Smith early this year. Labor 0 for 2, couple of ground balls. Two two just misses off the plate. Well, Carlson has been a little consistent out there a little inconsistent at times in other places in the strike zone the line drive right back up the middle for Torres his first hit another fastball that was supposed to be away it was up and out over the plate nice job two out rally for the Yankees Glaber has three stolen bases has not been thrown out this year so thinking along with two outs, maybe he takes a chance to get himself in the scoring position for Verdugo. He walked in the second, struck out looking in the fourth.
Kate Smith a non drafted free agent signed in 20. Jam shot to center field Freeman settling underneath it and that will do it for the sixth inning. We're all tied up at four. Yankee. That Yankee had a 254 batting average, 22 home runs, 252 runs played for the Twins, the Yankees, the Indians, the Mets, and in 1997, the Seattle Mariners. Pitcher takes over for the Yankees, Victor Gonzalez. Twenty-two homers, probably a middle infielder, don't you think? Played for the Indians, played for the Yankees, played for the Mariners. Yeah, I'm trying to think of Mariner and the Twins. He was in New York then, Will be seven eight nine against Gonzalez, Jimenez, Hedges, and Arias. Gonzalez fastball slider. Lefty along with Ferguson. Dodger organization last year. Watching to see if you're going on your computer no, to, to this find time. out this this Yankee. Yeah, I won't this time. I'll, I'll see if I can figure it out. Get busted yesterday. Swing and a miss on a good fastball in. One quick out already for Gonzalez. Yeah, Trevino setting up inside and a nice sinking two seamer in on the hands of Jimenez. We're gonna have a pinch hitter for Hedges. It's gonna be Rocchio. Barlow getting loose in that Guardians bullpen. Rokio, the starting shortstop, the first two games of this series. You see the numbers in the 12 games 227 batting average, couple RBIs. Gonzalez has gotten off to a good start out of the Yankee bullpen. It's allowed just one earned run and five relief appearances this year. Perfect eighth inning on Wednesday against the Marlins. Drive to deep right center. Soto cruising back. The wind helping it a little bit right on the warning track. Two down. Well, that's the bullpen in general. Outstanding job. 092 ERA over the last six games. The bring up Gabriel Arias, who's having a nice afternoon, two for two, with a solo home run. Went a long way to right center field. Another drive the other way Soto back on the track able to make the play and three quick outs for Gonzalez in the bottom of the sixth. The Yankees baseball on yes is brought to you in part by Hyundai. It's your journey on every mile in a brand new Hyundai and by FanDuel. New customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when they place any $5 bet. Cleveland, 
new pitcher for the Guardians, Scott, Scott Barlow, taking over. It'll be his eighth game. A few changes defensively to the Guardians that we will get to you. Well, Barlow threw an inning of work in game two as well. Shutout inning, no hits, no walks, no strikeouts. 8 9 1 for the Bombers. Trevino, Cabrera, and Bulpy. Four runs on seven hits for the Yankees, four runs on six hits for the Guardians. Trevino with his first home run of the season, his last at bat. Now Barlow threw a lot of sliders. His first two pitches were sliders. His fastball not overpowering in 91 92. Makes in a curveball as well. Line drive right at Ramirez. One down. Trevino starting to swing the bat a whole lot better. Yeah, he gets a 2 0 fastball and he just drills it. And it just happens to be right at Ramirez. We'll bring up as Waldo Cabrera. Fly out to right field, fly out to left field at batting average hovering just over 300. Barlow quickly ahead in the count 0 and 2. Again, another pitch on the outside part of the plate that's off that gets called for a strike. Guardians have made some changes defensively. Fry is now behind the plate catching. Rocchio, who came in as a pinch hitter for Hedges, now playing shortstop. Arias moves over to first. And a swing and a miss on a good curveball from Barlow. Two quick outs. Barlow missed on that curveball away. And this one he stayed back and got on top of. And there you see the break. He throws the slider a little less. Of a break and in that curveball, the depth on it looks like a fastball around the same height. And drops down on that back leg. Two down brings up Anthony Bolpe. Check swing, he did not go. Will be one for two with a walk. Weaver looks like he's ready to go. 3 1. Hot shot the other way. Another base hit for Volpe. His second of the afternoon. Yeah, nice at bat. Those two sliders down and away. I imagine last year he's probably swinging and missing, but he takes them this year because of the better stance he has at the plate. He gets a 3 1 fastball, doesn't try to pull it. It's up. He just goes the other way. Well, Stephen Boat on his way out to the mound, not wasting any time making the call to that guardian bullpen. We'll be back. Well, we're going to find out who that Yankee is. Let's take a look at the stats again. 254 batting average, 22 home runs, 252 runs. Played for the Twins, Yankees, Indians, Mets, and the Mariners. And you thought he was going to be a middle infielder with a 22 home run. That's the only good guess that I had because uh, Alvaro Espinosa. That's about the only thing that I could break down. OK, it's got to be a middle infielder playing that many years. And don't have a lot of long balls. And of course, I mean, 
Is that cheating if I have friends that are texting me the answer? No, that's not cheating because you're not going to the computer. Okay. They're coming your way. All right, good. Hunter Gaddis taking over for the Guardians. I would have never guessed it. You? No. You know who's right on this all the time, though, is the manager of the Yankees, Aaron yeah. Boone. He got this one easily, we were told. Pretty incredible. And was it, the little grade was, what, a nine? Soto two for three, a line out to right field, a single to right field, and a bunt single down the third base line. Volpe over there taking his lead. Well, Gaddis has got a good fastball, 96 97. He's got a slider and a changeup. A lot of changeups uh, to lefties. Soto going to take his time out. I would imagine late in the ball game, Soto may not see a fastball 3 1. He might see something off speed, whether it be a change up or a backdoor slider. And misses down another walk for Juan Soto and sets it up for Aaron Judge again. We'll take a look on the StatCast 3D by Google. Aaron Judge in the three-run bomb. 450 feet, exit below 114. Longest home run by a Yankee this season. That home run number 260 for Aaron Judge in his Yankee career. Yankees have been very comfortable playing in these close games. They are 6 and 0 in one run games. So a lot of confidence in that dugout. They know how to win the close ones. Fouled off. Nelly, I always thought that was so important early in the year to develop that attitude like good things are going to happen to us in these close games as opposed to the how are we going to lose this game. Right. I mean, well, you get off to such a great start. I mean, it, it's pretty easy to have that that attitude, whether you're a position player or a pitcher. And these are the situations during the season that you know judges starting to swing the bat a little bit more. That Soto is getting pitched around. They're not going after him, and they're challenging whoever's behind him. And most of the time, and actually every time this year, it, it's been Judge right behind Soto. Swing and a miss. Gaddis gets him a big spot in the top of the seventh inning. We are all tied at four. And on a beautiful afternoon in Cleveland, we will stay here for God Bless America. Ladies and gentlemen, during the seventh inning stretch, we remember and salute those who are overseas defending our freedoms and liberties. Please join us in singing God Bless America. God bless America. Land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam, God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my.
Well, it's time to look at our game summary. We're all tied up at four. Eight hits for the Yankees, couple of errors. Six hits for the Guardians. Nestor Cortez is four innings. Aaron Judd's that 260th career home run tied with Derek Jeter. Logan Allen, a nice afternoon. And Jose Ramirez, his third home run of the year. Bottom of the seventh, back to the top of the lineup. Juan Freeman and Ramirez facing the left-hander Gonzalez. Juan one for three. 379 batting average. He's hitting 375 against left-handed pitching. Quickly behind in the count. 0 and 2. He tried to square around the bun, and Cabrera is right on his neck, in on the grass at third base. I'd imagine Gonzalez would probably the Yankees maybe wanting him to get at least a nailer, right? Get past nailer. Yeah, you would think so. Fouled off the other way. Cabrera on the move. That's going to find the seats. A beautiful day here in Cleveland and a nice crowd of 28,119 taking in the final game of this series. Right at Rizzo on one hop. He'll take it himself. One down. New season, new reasons to say yes. Download the Yes app and stream games with a live stat overlay. Play along, win cash prizes, and earn Yes rewards to redeem for gift cards and gear. Download now and remember that if you get Yes on TV, then you definitely get the Yes app for free. Or you can sign up for a subscription. Aaron Boone's going to make a pitching change. Nice job by Gonzalez. And at hexclad.com, we're going to look at as Waldo Cabrera and his season cooking up something special. A 295 batting average, three home runs, 11 RBIs, and the 899 OPS. Consistency, right? You're getting those consistent at bats. Helps. Luke Weaver. Takes over to be his fifth game, 3 and 0 record. His three wins this season are tied for most in the major leagues. Come on to face Freeman and then Ramirez. Well, nice job by Gonzalez. A little surprised that maybe Gonzalez didn't stay around to get through Naylor, a lefty on lefty. I was thinking the lefty to stay in there to keep Ramirez on the right side right. of the play where he doesn't have as much power. Still a good average hitter from that side. But Weaver gets the ball. Heading the count 0 and 1 on Freeman. Ball right on the outside corner. Three pitches, two down. 97. And off the plate. Good pitch. You see it a couple inches off the plate, gets the call. Well, Aaron Boone going with the relievers who did not work in that day night doubleheader yesterday Gonzalez, Birdie, and now Weaver. Here is the dangerous Jose Ramirez had a two run home run in the third. Change up off of Nestor Cortez. Weaver changing his wind up in spring training. He used to have a big leg kick. He shortens it up, less moving parts. He feels a little bit more comfortable this way. See that leg kick, not very high. Jam shot right back up the middle. Bolt be up with it. Weaver knocked it down, took some steam off of it. 
Two outs in the seventh for Weaver. We're going to take this one to the eighth. The New York Yankees Foundation's 50-50 raffle is now open. During every home game at Yankee Stadium, one lucky fan wins half the pot, and the other half is donated to the New York Yankees Foundation. Buy your tickets now at yankees.com slash 50-50. Hunter Gaddis still in there. It'll be Stanton Rizzo Torres. Stanton one for three, a single in the sixth. Thrown out at second base, trying to extend it. Heron getting loose in the Guardians' pen. Ooh, big swing, foul straight back from Stanton. And the 3 2 from Gaddis. Sky to center field. Freeman settling underneath it. As you run back to the dugout of your stand, you're thinking about that 2 1 fastball that you fouled straight back. That was the one to hit. Yeah, because you pretty much knew you weren't going to get a fastball to hit 3 2. You get that slider, and that's what Gaddis went. Went with one down. Here's Anthony Rizzo. First pitch swinging. Anthony 0 for 3 with a couple of errors in this game. Works underneath that one, pops it up to the left side. Easy play for Ramirez. Two down. Rizzo actually has three other two error games in his career last with the Cubs in 2019. Another look at the swing. Yeah, this is just a slider it jammed him. Two quick outs for Gaddis and that'll bring up Glaber Torres. Labor looking to fill that column in the middle, looking for his first home run of the year. Well, Gaddis really has it working here in the eighth. Yeah, good fastball. He's gotten it up to 97 to 98, and a good slider down and away. You can either go up top with that fastball, and sometimes Gaddis will go with that slider down and away. That is three quick outs for Hunter Gaddis in the top of the eighth inning. We're all tied at four. We're going to take this baby to the bottom half. The New York Yankees may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the New York Yankees. Bottom of the eighth inning, Naylor Fry Loriano against Luke Weaver. Afternoon for the DH, two for three, a double, a single, and an RBI. Get behind the count to Naylor. He's looking again. Every time he gets in a hitter's count, he's looking to do damage to the right side. He wants to pull the ball. Weaver has a good changeup. Fastball clips the outside corner. Something soft away. Also likes to throw the cutters inside. Two righties or two lefties. Two 
a good pitch right there. Cut her in. Cut her in. Did you see the swing though? That's a violent swing as the closer for the Guardians getting ready. We're right back in there. With that swing. Do up in the ninth inning Verdugo Trevino and Cabrera seven eight nine. Well Naylor's really turned himself into a good hitter not just a slugger now but. Sees a lot of pitches fouls a bunch of tough pitches off the high batting average and the power to go with it. Yeah, he's turned it around especially since he's been a guardian. You know, I remember when he was out in San Diego. Didn't get a lot of playing time. Comes over here to Cleveland. Become a really, a really good player. Looks like he's going to take his time out. This will be a big pitch in this ball game. The Guardian fans starting to get into it. Weaver here. Here's a guy that I don't want to beat. Three two. You're hitting something away. Swing and a miss. Good changeup from Weaver. That is a big out to start the eighth inning. The yeah, outstanding pitch. This is a three two change. You, know, you see the sink action of that circle change and it just tips off the nailer's bat. Nice job by Trevino to hang on to it. Outstanding pitch. One down brings up David Fry. Ground ball to the left side, foul ball. Well, we've had a beautiful sunny afternoon here in Cleveland, but now the clouds starting to roll in. Overcast. Another good change up from Weaver. Yeah, range, range stay away. I mean, let's, let's go. Told there's a possibility of rain later on. And here comes the 0-2 from Weaver. Fouled straight back. Guy like Luke Weaver with that abbreviated windup you're talking about, generating 97 miles an hour, and plenty of arm speed. Yeah, you stay back on that back foot and get a good drop and drive, as you see right there. That cutter at 91 and two quick outs, back-to-back -back strikeouts here in the eighth inning for Weaver. Yeah, nice pitch, a cutter up. You're on cutter at 91, so you're taking a little bit off of the fastball. His fastball reaches about 96. You see that drop and drive, the abbreviated leg kick. Hey, fans, stay tuned after the final out for today's WB Mason Yankees post game as Bob Lorenz and Jack Curry will have highlights and analysis. Meredith gets player interviews in the clubhouse, and you'll hear from Aaron Boone on the manager's report. Plus, a look ahead to the upcoming series with the Toronto Blue Jays. All that after the final out on the WB Mason Yankees post game. Which it goes Matt Blake out to go through a little scattering report on Esteban Floreal. If anybody should know this hitter, it's the New York Yankee coaching staff. Yeah, you got a pinch hitter coming up, and he's looking for one thing, and that's early count fastball. One home run in eight games. He did that yesterday. Got an early count fastball. Looked like four seamer or cutter. It's a drive to right field and deep and gone. Esteban Floreal, his second home run in as many days, and that gives the Guardians 
A one-run lead. We just mentioned what early count fastballs, right, for pinch hitters. You got a cutter of the first pitch at 93 down, and Weaver tried to come back in with a fastball. You got guys coming off the bench. They're looking for one thing. They're looking for dead red. Well, how does that feel for Esteban Floreal? Spent all that time in the Yankee system, getting a chance here in Cleveland. And one swing at the bat gives the Guardians a late lead. Now he's always had the power. And he's a good fastball hitter. You see where this fastball is out over the middle of the plate. It, it was supposed to be in, and that's one thing. You had to be careful. You see Weaver's reaction there. You had to be careful with fastballs early. And you knew he's a good dead red hitter. Off speed, he's always had that problem when he was with the Yankees. A lot of swing and miss stuff, and he gets a fastball that he's able to handle, and he puts it in the right field seats. Here's Jimenez 0 for 3 in the afternoon. Weak ground ball to Rizzo at first. Over to Weaver. Bang, bang, play. But they get him. A lot closer than we thought it was going to be, but the big swing from Esteban Floreal as Luke Weaver just airmails that baseball into the crowd. Another look. Looks like Weaver just beat him. Yankees are going to have to have a little comeback here in the ninth against the Guardians closer. Check out our T-Mobile coverage cam. Anthony Volpe has had another good afternoon. Yeah, this one's off of Allen right off his left arm, and then he goes the other way again in the seventh inning. And he's made some real nice plays calling off Cabrera on that shallow pop-up. Well, the Yankees trail five to four. One swing of the bat by that man, Esteban Floreal. Will Brennan takes over in right field. And the closer for the Cleveland Guardians takes over, Emmanuel Class A. Six innings has not walked a batter and has struck out six. Four for four in save opportunities. It's going to be seven, eight, nine. Verdugo, Trevino, and Cabrera. Well, I thought there was a chance that the Yankees could avoid Class A. During this series, but not today. Classe, big, big time fastball, 98 to 100 miles an hour, and a slider. The American League and saves both last year and 2022. He's coming right at Verdugo with the heat, 100 mile an hour cutters. He's been dominant since 21 among right-handed pitching. Saves, ERA, opponents OBP in games. Generally a closer who throws the ball over the plate and a whole lot of free passes. Just rearing back and letting it go. He, he still has a really good slider as well. He's got a wipeout slider. Lefty's 143 off of him this year. Weak ground ball to the right side. The flip to Class A, one down. Uh, Class A uh, goes back with that fastball and you see how quick he got off the mound. PFP work on it every day, Groundhog Day in spring training. Bring up Trevino, has hit the ball hard two times, including that solo home run. Another hard hit for Trevino, a solid base hit in the left field. Swung the bat well today. Yeah, nice job. Gets a first pitch fastball that he's able to handle. Nice AP. Get that tying run aboard. That 
That's it for Trevino. We'll have a pinch runner. Jones takes over. I wonder how aggressive the Yankees will be here. A lot of times, the closers, they don't hold runners on well. They also don't like to throw over to first. Not running. There's a ground ball to the right side. Arias up with it, goes to second, gets the lead runner. Nice defensive play, two down. Now that's an outstanding play by Arias. You usually don't see this. You keep the lead runner off of second and off of keep him from in scoring position. A lot of times you see that play he just goes right to first to get the out. But Arias, a third baseman and shortstop, has a great arm over there at first. Well, this will be a good matchup here. Anthony Bolpe is swinging a hot bat against one of the best closers in baseball, and Juan Soto will be waiting on deck. Again, Cabrera runs well. Closers do not like to throw over first, and he also really don't care about holding on runners. They, they have high leg kicks. That last pitch, Classe has that high leg kick. Cabrera not running. That fastball misses. Volpe in the driver's seat, 2 0. Oh. Again, you know, Class A knows that Juan Soto is waiting on deck, followed by Aaron Judge. Fouled off. Good swing. I call it a cutter, but he has a little action on his fastball. Is that a hundred? Cabrera, a little bigger lead. Not running. Hard hit to right field. Brennan not able to come up with it. It goes all the way to the wall. Cabrera around third and coming home. And we're all tied up. Anthony Volpe comes through big time. Outstanding at bat by Volpe. Brennan, the defensive replacement. Look, he took a bad angle to that ball in the gap. He gets a fastball. Supposed to be in. It was out and up. Cabrera with good speed. He's going to score once this ball gets to the wall. Two down. Here's Juan Soto. Volpe in scoring position. Big swing and a miss. You know, the first slider Class A's thrown here in this inning. Doesn't get much better than miss this matchup here. Soto against Class A. Clay Holmes. And the 0-2. Just missed down and in. Right back to Class A. He'll be able to work his way out of the ninth inning, but Anthony Volpe continuing his hot start. Big double, big RBI. We're all tied up. Well, how about Anthony Volpe? Fastball out over the plate and drills it. To the right center field gap. That's going to score Cabrera to tie the game. Outstanding game. Three hits today. 
Austin Wells takes over behind the plate. Clay Holmes will take over out on the mound. It'll be his eighth game. Bullpen has really been a strength for Aaron Boone this year. Birdie, Gonzalez, Weaver, and now Holmes. And it'll be 8 9 1 for the Guardians. Rocchio, Arias, and Quan. Waldo Cabrera in on the grass at third, guarding against the bunt. We're all tied up at five. Ball two. A couple sinkers, a little crossfire for Holmes down and in to Rocchio. Three oh. Talk about this Guardians lineup, not the most powerful, but they do try to manufacture runs. As Arias waiting on deck. He has a home run this afternoon. There's a fastball for a strike. Don't surprise me if Rokio takes another one. He's swinging, ground ball to the right side off his foot. It'll be a foul ball. And the 3 2 from Holmes. Hard ground ball right at Bolte. Hangs in there. One down. Nice play. Gabrielle Arias, a good day. Two for three, a single, a solo home run, couple of runs scored. Getting ready. Well, if we go extras, he will be on second base to start the inning. Aaron Judge will be the leadoff hitter in the tenth if we get there. Last couple sliders from Holmes. It caught too much of the plate. Let's see if he's going to go back with that pitch. A little bit sharper and down on the way. Maybe expand the zone a little bit more. A good idea. Juan waiting on deck. And the 2 2. to areas that this at bat has been an all speed pitch. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming. Down and away a one out walk for Arias and that'll take it to the top of the lineup. 
Stephen Kwan. Yeah, Holmes had no intentions of throwing areas of fastball in this at bat. Every every pitch was that slider. Squares around the bunt. And he offered at it. Strike one. Yeah, a little surprised at Quan's bunny here. He definitely offered at this sinker. Holmes got, has to be tough to bunt on as much as his fastball moves. And you have Cabrera right on top of him. There you see Cabrera on the grass. See that big hole between first and second as well. Ground ball to second. Could be two. Labor to Volpe. The scoop by Rizzo. Not in time. As the throw was a little wide and low, Rizzo, a good job just to pick it. Yeah, nice feed. Volpe had to rush the throw. Quan runs well. Outstanding job by Rizzo just keeping it in the infield. There you see, he rushes his throw. One hop, nice job. That could have got in the camera well and put Quan at second. Well, here's Bo Naylor, brother of Josh Naylor, and Quan with plenty of speed at first. And when you have movement like Holmes has, how tough is that for a catcher to try to throw down a second? Yeah, you really got to hang in there. And also the other thing, Nelly, not easy to sit around for eight innings and then come into a game and try to throw a base runner out if you're Austin Wells. If you play Holmes, this is the guy you have to go get. Jose Ramirez waiting on deck. Josh Naylor behind him. Oh, he gets that 99 mile an hour fastball down. That was definitely low. But he gets the call. Yeah, that's it for the Guardians bench. Stephen Vogt going with Naylor. Ramirez waiting on deck. Swing and a miss. Holmes got him. Free baseball, we're going to. Extra innings are going to be presented by Arby's. All tied up at five. New pitcher for the Guardians, Tyler Beatty, takes over. There are his numbers in the seven innings that he has worked this year. Pitched in game two last night. Gave up a couple runs to the Yankees. And Juan Soto is going to make his way out to second base. Aaron Judge makes his way up to the plate. Judge with a three run home run in the third. Beatty misses with a curveball. Beatty fastball 92 to 93 in the curveball. Does have a slider and a changeup. Hasn't thrown that yet this year. Just basically has stayed with that curveball fastball mix. Judge quickly ahead in the count 2 and 0 oh, as it has gotten very dark here in Cleveland. The clouds have moved in. Stanton waiting on deck. Mark Carlson, the home plate umpire, looks like we had a pitch clock infraction. Be 3 0 to Aaron Judge. They're just going to walk him. There's no sense of trying to get back into the count. The judge at first, Soto at second, and John Carlos Stanton, the designated hitter, up at the plate.
first pitch strike for Beatty. Stanton one for four a single in the sixth. One of the hottest hitters for the Yankees over the last five or six games. That's blocked by Naylor who's taken over behind the plate now a few changes for the Guardians defensively another look at the block keeping that double play in order you got Fry at first base now Brennan in center field areas and right and a 1 1 to Stanton Tapper down the third base line Ramirez not going to have a play an infield hit for John Carlos Stanton and the bases are loaded with nobody out here in the 10th. Tomorrow morning, that's a line drive. But how about this? this is a changeup. Just hits off the end of the bat. No man's land. You see where Ramirez is playing. No chance to get this and throw Stanton out of first. A really big spot for Anthony Rizzo as the Guardians bring their infield defense in, trying to cut that runner off at home. Hot shot down the line, base hit for Rizzo. Soto scores. Here comes Judge. Yankees lead 7 5. Boy, Anthony Rizzo has had a tough afternoon until that swing of the bat. What a big one. Huge first pitch splitter, a changeup that hung out over the middle of the plate. Well, it made a great play in that bottom of the ninth, and then he just goes down and gets this changeup. Hits it right past Fry, the first baseman. RBI base hit, scores two runs. Now we're going to have a pinch runner for Stanton. And you can see Rizzo's fired up. I think he's have played a lot of close games early on this year. Well, with Rizzo, it doesn't matter how you start, it's how you finish. And what a great at bat he just put together there. Driving in two. It's going to be Kevin Smith taking over for Stanton as the pinch runner. Glaber Torres up at the plate. I think he's trying to add on. First and second, nobody out. Seven five bombers. Torres one for four, a single in the sixth. Ferguson going through it with Mike Harkey, the bullpen coach. Speed that curveball, he wind up hanging one over the middle of the plate. Torres will do some damage on it. Intentional walk to Judge, infield hit from Stanton, base hit, two RBIs from Rizzo, and now Torres squares around the bunt, right back to the mound. BD up with it, gets the out. Smith over to third, Rizzo to second, and all set up for Alex Verdugo. A nice sacrifice there. He gets a good pitch, really takes the Guardians by surprise. 1-1 one, one count. Pitch up in the zone. Just goes the other way. Again, the Guardians bring the infield defense in. Second and third, one down. The curveball misses badly. 0 for 3 for Dugo. Smith off of third. Rizzo off of second. Pulled foul. Beatty to the left. He's a lot of off speed. He's going with that split change. 
Rizzo hit that split chain for a base hit. That's all that Verdugo has seen here. He's seen one curveball the first pitch and then two changeups. Verdugo just trying to battle now, put the ball in play, see what happens. Line in the count one and two. It's a hot shot down first. Fry up with it, the throw home, and they're going to get Smith. And now the double play as Naylor gets Verdugo at first base. What a play by Fry coming home. Naylor with the tag and then the throw to get Verdugo. Wow, what a great play by Fry. And a nice tag by Naylor. How about the arm? Wow. But the big swing in the inning, Anthony Rizzo, a base hit, a couple of RBIs, and the Yankees take a 7-5 lead. An impressive defensive play to end that 10th inning, the 3-2-3 three, three double play. Yeah, Flash, you see this every day, don't you? <laughs> How about a play by Fry and a tag by Naylor, and then he goes back to first, and another great pick by Fry. The Yankees score two, take a 7-5 lead. Caleb Ferguson takes over. It'll be his seventh game. Has six innings already with six strikeouts. And Bo Naylor, after that defensive play behind the plate, will now be the runner on second base. And it'll be 3-4-5. Ramirez, Naylor, and Fry against Ferguson. Yeah, Ferguson fastball curveball. Looks like he's having a little trouble with the pitch comp. If you're Ferguson here, that runner at second means nothing. You concentrate on Ramirez, Naylor next. Ramirez had a two run home run against Nestor Cortez in the third. Well, this is the slider off of Cortez, or actually, it was a changeup. Sitting off speed the whole time. He hits it down the left field line. And with the lefty on the mound, he's back to hitting right handed. We spoke about his numbers early on. Batting average pretty much the same. Has more home runs against right handed pitching, but he'll face the lefty Ferguson here. Again, the runner at second means nothing. You're up by two. have kept Ramirez down the first two games of this series but starting to get it going a little bit here in game three as Naylor takes his lead. Fouled straight back. And the one two. Well, Ferguson's going to get through this bottom of the 10th inning. He's going to have to earn it. Ramirez, Naylor, and Fry, middle of the lineup for the Guardians. Pulled foul.
good fastball outside. I would stay away maybe from the off speed. Fastball away. Be a good pitch. And some good swings from Ramirez, fouling off some tough pitches. Another one there. Good battle between Ferguson and Ramirez. Six straight foul balls. We will do it again. Line drive. Base hit. Naylor's going to hold that third. Ramirez a big turn. He'll hold it first. So Ramirez wins that battle against Ferguson. Yeah, when you see that many pitches from a pitcher like Ferguson, usually the advantage goes to the hitter. Nice at bat by Ramirez. He gets a fastball and he just gets it in the center field for a base hit. Well, here's Josh Naylor, and we talked early on. He has done a much better job the last two years against left-handed pitching. Batting average just under 300. Ground ball to second. Torres to Volpe. Bobbled the transfer, so they'll get one. The Guardians score one run, so it's 7-6 to six as Naylor scores. Well, nice job by Torres. He goes to his left. Nice feed, and Volpe wanted to hurry to throw, just could not get it into his hand quick enough. There you see, bobbles it. Just that bobble right there is going to allow Naylor to get the first. Manager Stephen Boat has used his entire bench, so Naylor will stay in as the runner. It'll be David Fry. Takes a first pitch fastball for a ball. That is starting to rain here. Progressive field. I think he's trying to hold on. Rizzo, Ferguson, and Wells trying to get on the same page. Fry 0 for 3. You have Brennan on deck, the left handed hitter. That was a good fastball, 94. And the 1-1. One, one. Skied deep to the left. Judge back. And that's going to be off the wall. Naylor around second. Now coming around third. He's going to be held up. As David Fry was that close to ending this one for the Guardians. Yeah, Naylor has to hold up, thinking this ball might be caught by Judge with only one out. It hits high off of that wall. You watch. It's a pitch up in the zone. Fry gets a good piece of it. Now watch Naylor. Think maybe this might be caught. He goes all the way to second. Doesn't run real well, so once he sees that ball get off the wall, he's got to be held at third. Nice job by Judge getting it back in the infield. Yankees bring the infield defense in. Will Brennan up at the plate, left on left. Naylor off of third. Fry taking his lead off of second. There's the infield defensively. And Fry at second will get a big lead knowing that Volpe's in on that grass. 2 0. Oh. First base is open. You have Jimenez, another left-handed hitter, on deck. Ground ball to second. Glaber can't come up with it. Clean the throw, and he's safe. 
Torres had a little problem with the transfer, couldn't come up with it clean. And we're all tied up. Well, you had the infield in. He had an opportunity to get Naylor at home. He doesn't run well. And a really poor jump off of third as well. A little surprise he didn't slide. There you see Torres. He tried to find the ball, couldn't pick it up. And Naylor gets in there. It's fielder's choice and an RBI for Brennan. First and third, one down, all tied up at seven. Guarding second baseman Jimenez. As Anthony Rizzo is going to call time, go have a talk. Rizzo actually called. It looked like Aaron Boone or Matt Blake out of the dugout. Well, Jimenez at the plate, he runs well. He's going to be tough to double up if you decide to play the infield back. Now, a lot of times, you'll see the manager load the bases in this scenario, right? Force at home. Definitely a possibility. I'm wondering the left on left here with Jimenez, although Jimenez a real good hitter. 0 for 4 today. Rocchio, the right-handed batter on deck. Aaron Boone looks like they're going to go right at Jimenez. First and third, one down, all tied up at seven. Yankees trying to hold on. The Guardians trying to win the final game of the series. Jimenez try to put that elbow, that, that left elbow or right elbow in on that pitch. Torres, he's on the dirt as, as well as Volpe. There's Torres on the dirt. Anything hit hard to him, he might be able to turn a double play. You see the infield lineup. Anything hit hard to Torres or even Volpe, you might be able to get a double play and get Jimenez at, at first. Ferguson ahead in the count, one and two. Line drive, right field at Soto. Fry's going to tag. Here's the throw. It's not in time, and the Guardians come all the way back to win this one, 8-7. Andres Jimenez, the hero for the Guardians, and the Yankees lose a tough one. Yeah, tough loss, and a couple defensive miscues late in the ball game. Cost the Yankees. They fought back. They played a great game. But just that last inning facing the meat of the order for the Guardians. And to come through. Guardians celebrate out on the field. They take the finale. The Yankees take the series. And now their record 12 and 4.